Today we're going to be making the Daphne handbag. I hope you enjoy making this stylish purse. Choose to make fabric handle connectors as instructed in the pattern, or you can add metal strap connectors as shown on the pattern cover for a professional touch. We have a variety of styles and sizes of strap connectors available on our website, sallytomato.com. The finished size of this handbag is nine and a half inches wide at the base, nine inches high, and four and a half inches deep. Inside you'll find a zipper pocket, slip pocket. You can choose to make cork or vinyl handles and a crossbody strap. There is a bottom accent, faux piping, and a top zipper closure. Before beginning, please review the recommended fabrics on the back of the pattern cover. Also, it may be helpful to label your pieces as you cut them by marking on the wrong side of your fabric with a removable pen or chalk. You'll start by measuring and cutting the following pieces in the pattern according to the instructions. Also, make sure that you copy and cut out all the paper pattern pieces found in the pattern. It's important to note that some pattern pieces need to be pieced together. You can piece them by matching up the red lines, red ovals, and corresponding numbers. Simply tape your pattern pieces together before you cut them out. Also, some of the pattern pieces need to be cut on the fold, so make sure that you make note of those. When you're cutting out your bottom accent piece and using either faux leather or cork fabric, it's easiest to place the pattern piece on the wrong side of your fabric and trace the entire pattern piece. Since this piece is cut on the fold, you'll mirror the pattern piece by flipping it and then line up that long straight edge where the fold line is supposed to be. And then you'll trace the other side of the pattern piece to complete the shape. When cutting faux leather or cork fabric, it's easiest to trace the pattern piece instead of cutting it on the fold. It'll be more accurate than if we were to fold it. Also, what I like to do for a nice clean straight edge is to use a rotary cutter to cut the straight parts. Be careful not to cut past the corners. Cut up to the corner as close as you can, but leave a little bit so then you can just trim the corner with your scissors. And that will help prevent you from cutting too far into your corner. If you decide to make your own connectors out of your faux leather or cork fabric, to make the best use of your material, what I like to do is trace each of the connectors in that extra fabric from the accent section. So I'm going to finish cutting out my pieces. You can pause this video at any point, that way we can sew along together. Fuse the interfacing to the wrong side of each coordinating main panel. I recommend using a light or a medium weight woven interfacing. If you use a non-woven interfacing, I find that your fabrics can wrinkle a little bit easier and tend to hold creases more. So a woven interfacing will behave better with our woven fabrics. After those are fused, iron your interfacing to the wrong side of your patch pocket, zipper tab, and strap connectors piece. Next, take both zipper pocket pieces and iron the bottom long edge a half inch to the wrong side on each piece. I like to use a hot ruler for this step. To use a hot ruler, simply place the ruler on the wrong side of your fabric and fold the edge up to the half inch mark. This ruler is iron safe and it will not melt, so you can iron directly over the ruler so you have a perfect half inch fold. Hot rulers are available on our website or at your local fabric shop. Take one zipper pocket piece. On the wrong side, mark a horizontal line down from the top edge according to the pattern. Mark another horizontal line down from the first line, then also mark a vertical line in from each side according to the pattern. These lines will create a zipper placement box. What I like to do is measure down with my ruler and mark across, so then I can line up the top edge evenly and also the center marks to make sure it's centered on my lining piece. With right sides together, center the marked pocket on one lining piece down from the top edge according to your pattern. Pin the pocket in place. Sew along the zipper placement box. It's easiest to use a shorter stitch length for this step. Use a small scissors or a seam ripper to carefully cut a horizontal line through the center of the placement box. Stop about a half inch from both ends. Cut diagonally up to the corners from both ends of the center line. Make sure you cut through all the layers. And also, be careful you do not cut through your stitching. Fold the pocket through the opening to the wrong side of the lining. Iron in place from both sides of the lining and use your fingers to roll the edge so your pocket piece lays flat. On the wrong side of the lining, center your zipper right side down over the placement opening. 
The pull in the right side of your zipper teeth should show through on the right side of your lining. I'm using Sally Tomato Zippers by the Yard. This type of zipper has a nylon coil, so it's safe to cut and sew over. I like to use double-sided basting tape or glue to hold the zipper in place. Also, an important thing to note is if you're right-handed, you'll want your zipper to close to the right. And if you're left-handed, you'll want your zipper pull to close to the left. From the right side of your lining, top stitch an eighth inch from the zipper placement box. A zipper foot will help stitch close to the edge. After sewing, you can trim any excess zipper tape even with the side edges of the pocket. On the wrong side of your lining, place the remaining zipper pocket right side down over the attached zipper pocket. Make sure that the folded edges are along the bottom. Align all the edges and pin only the sides and the top edge leaving the bottom open. Be careful that you don't pin through your lining. Next, move the lining away from the top pinned edge. Then you're gonna sew the full width of the pocket across the top with 5 8 inch seam allowance. It's easier to sew the step with the right side of the lining face up. Next, fold the lining away from the right side of the pocket and sew the full length of the zipper pocket side edge with a quarter inch seam allowance. Make sure that the bottom edges stay folded. Then you're going to repeat to sew the left side edge. Do not sew the bottom edge of the zipper pocket. We will turn the bag right side out through this opening later. After sewing, you can unfold the front of your lining and iron out any creases. It's very important that you unzip your zipper completely because we will be turning the bag right side out later through the zipper pockets. With right sides together, fold the patch pocket in half aligning the short edges. Align the top and the side edges and pin the layers together. Sew the top and the sides with a quarter inch seam allowance leaving about three inches unsewn along the top edge. Trim the corners and be careful not to cut through your stitches. Turn the pocket right side out. You can use a stiletto or a turning tool to help poke out the corners. Tuck the raw edges of the opening to the wrong side so the fold is even with the bottom edge. Press the pocket flat, then top stitch the top edge an eighth inch and three eighths inch from the edge. If you'd like, you can add a handmade label centered down from the top edge of your remaining lining piece. We have a variety of labels available on our website. This handmade label is installed with prongs. We have five different finishes of labels available. This is our antique finish with our script font. With right sides up, center the pocket down from the top edge of the remaining lining piece. You can pin or tape the side edges and the bottom in place. Top stitch the pocket an eighth inch from the sides and the bottom edge. If you'd like, you can top stitch a vertical line up the center of the pocket to divide the pocket into two compartments. I'm just going to leave mine as one large pocket. With right sides together, align both lining pieces and sew the sides and the bottom edge of the lining with 3 8 inch seam allowance. Stop sewing at each of the cut corners. After sewing, trim the seam allowance to 1 8 inch wide. Next, you're gonna create a boxed bottom at each bottom corner of the lining. You'll do this by separating the layers of the lining and with right sides together, match the side seam and the bottom seam and the raw edges. Sew together with a half inch seam allowance. Make sure to backstitch at each end. Then you'll trim each corner to reduce bulk. Just be careful that you don't trim through your seam. Turn your lining right side out. After that, your lining is prepped and you can set it aside for now. Next, I'm going to show you how to make fabric handle connectors. If you're adding metal strap connectors, then you're gonna to wanna to skip to the next section of instructions. With wrong sides together, equally space each of the handle connectors against the contrast handle connectors back piece. Use basting spray or basting tape or glue to hold the connectors in place. Next, you're gonna cut along the outer edge of each connector to create four connectors. 
I chose to use this method for creating the connectors so that way you ensure that the back side of the connector is even with the edges of the front. Next, thread the top of each connector through one rectangle ring and fold the top to the back side so it's a quarter inch from the bottom edge. I've switched over to a Teflon foot because it will be easier to top stitch on the faux leather or your cork fabric. Top stitch about a half inch from the fold on the connector. If you don't have a Teflon foot, you can add a layer of tissue paper between your presser foot and your fabric to help you stitch. After sewing, you repeat the same process to create four strap connectors. Depending on the width of your hardware, you may have to cut your handles a different width. Whatever the finished width of your handle connector or hardware is, you'll want to double that to cut your width for each of your handles. So for example, I'm using a finished width three quarter inch hardware for my bag. So I cut each of my handles to be one and a half inches wide. If you're using one inch hardware, you'll want to cut your handles two inches wide. So what you wanna do is with wrong sides together, fold each long side of the handle to the center. What I like to do is mark the center length and then it's easier to fold each of the side edges and align them with that center mark. You can use basting tape, glue, or sewing clips to hold the fabric in place. I usually just use my stiletto and fold it over as I sew. I have my Teflon foot attached to my machine to help sew over the faux leather or your cork fabric. You're going to want to top stitch both of the long sides to keep those folds in place and you're going to top stitch an eighth inch from each side of the center. I also recommend to increase your stitch length to about three millimeters or three and a half millimeters whenever you're doing top stitching because it has a more defined stitch and has that professional look to it. Next, measure according to the pattern from each end of the handles. Draw a diagonal line between each mark and the center of each handle. Cut along each diagonal line to create tapered ends. With right sides up, thread each handle end through one ring on a connector or directly through your hardware. Fold each end according to the pattern to the wrong side. Top stitch the ends of the handle to itself about a half inch from the fold. If your handle is wide enough, and if you would like to, you can fold each handle in half with wrong sides together along the length and clip them together. Then you'll top stitch each handle a quarter inch from the long edge and about an inch and a quarter from each folded edge. This will give a rolled or a piped handle effect. Since my handle is only finished three quarters of an inch, there's not a lot of room to work with here, so I'm going to leave my handle flat. Join the crossbody strap pieces by placing the short ends right sides together, perpendicular to each other, overlapping the ends. Sew a diagonal seam from corner to corner. Trim excess seam to a quarter inch wide, finger press the seam open, and top stitch an eighth inch from each side of the seam. Trim the extra fabric even with the edges of the strap. Next, with wrong sides together, fold the strap in half along the length. You can use some wonder clips to hold the folds in place. Then you're gonna top stitch each long side with an eighth inch seam allowance. After sewing, thread one end of the strap over the center bar of a slider buckle. Fold the end of the strap towards the underside and top stitch the strap to itself either with a straight line across, a box, or even a box with an X in the middle for reinforcement. I'm just going to sew a straight line across. Next, have the underside of your strap face up and make sure your strap isn't twisted. Thread the opposite end of the strap without the slider buckle through a swivel hook and move the swivel hook so it's closer to the buckle. The flat side of the swivel hook should be against the underside of your strap. Then thread the end of the strap over the center bar of the slider buckle again. This will help conceal that raw end and underside of the strap. To complete the strap, thread the end through the remaining swivel hook. Again, you'll want the flat side of the hardware against the underside of the strap. Then fold the end of the strap onto itself and top stitch the end of the strap to itself, just like you did before. With wrong sides together, Fold each length side of the strap connectors piece to the center. Top stitch 
each link side with a quarter inch seam allowance. Fold the connector in half matching the short raw edges and cut into two pieces along the fold. Make sure each connector measure according to the pattern. Next, slide one D-ring over the end of each connector so it's in the center. The flat side of the hardware should be against the wrong side. Add a pin to hold the fabric in place. Make sure the placement lines are transferred onto the contrast accent piece. You can do this by folding your pattern piece along the placement line and aligning the pattern piece on the wrong side of your fabric. Then take a pen or chalk to mark the placement line. Next, you'll want to adhere basting tape or glue to the wrong side along each of the placement lines and also along the top edges. With wrong sides up, position each exterior main panel on top of the accent, matching the bottom edge along the placement lines. From the right side, top stitch the accent to each main panel with an eighth inch seam allowance along the curved edges and the side edges. A Teflon foot comes in handy for this step. Also, be sure to take your time since this top stitching will be featured on the front and the back of your bag. Next, make sure each of the big feet placement marks are transferred onto the right side of your base support. I did this by poking the pointed end of my stiletto through each of the placement marks and using a pen to transfer the marks onto my base support. Then adhere basting tape or basting spray to the wrong side of the base support. Then center the base support against the wrong side of your accent. Top stitch the base support in place a quarter inch from the edges. The next step is to install your purse feet. I like to use a rotary punch to punch each of the holes for the purse feet, but you could also use a seam ripper or an awl. Then you'll install the purse feet according to the manufacturer's instructions. For these feet, simply poke the prong through from the right side to the wrong side, add a washer over the prongs, and bend the prongs away from the center. I also recommend to add a little bit of glue and if you have any scraps of interfacing, to iron interfacing over the wrong side of each of the hardwares to help hold it in place and to help prevent your fabric from being scratched on the inside. After your purse feet are installed, you'll center the assembled exterior piece on your foam. Use temporary adhesive spray to help hold the exterior in place, and you can also pin along the outer edges. Next, you're going to baste all outer edges of the exterior to the foam with a quarter inch seam allowance. Try using a walking foot or a Teflon foot to help prevent puckering and shifting of your fabric. Also, make sure you increase your seam allowance to about 5 millimeters long since we're just tacking the exterior in place. If your machine has the capability to adjust the foot pressure, raise the foot pressure so that way there isn't as much pressure on your fabric that will also help prevent shifting and puckering. After sewing, trim the foam even with the edges of the exterior. The next step is to attach the handle connectors to each of the exterior main panels. First, you want to transfer the placement marks from the pattern piece. I find that the easiest way to do this is to cut along the placement on the pattern piece and cut out that rectangular shape. Then you'll align the pattern piece even with your edges and mark that lower bottom corner. That mark will be where the upper corner of your connector will be positioned. Make sure you have four placement marks on your bag. If you're using the fabric handle connectors made according to the pattern, position the handle connectors right side up and top stitch each of the connectors to the bag with an eighth inch seam allowance along the curved edges and across the top about a quarter of an inch from that seam we made earlier. If you're using metal strap connectors, you'll position those according to the pattern as well and insert according to the manufacturer's instructions. I'm using Sally Tomato textured loop strap connectors. Another great style of connectors to add to this bag are fabric strap connectors. Be sure to check out our YouTube tutorials on how to install each of those. Make sure you have the pleat lines transferred onto each of your main panels and the accent. Again, you can do this by folding your pattern piece along the pleat line and marking the pleat line onto your fabric, either with chalk or a removable pen. Next, you're gonna to top stitch along each of the four pleat lines. 
this top stitching will help compress the foam and help to create the pleats later on. With wrong sides together, fold along each pleat line so the top stitching is along the fold. Use some sewing clips to hold the fold in place and help compress the foam to prepare for sewing. Start with your needle at the top edge of the fold line and gradually increase your seam allowance to a quarter inch, about one inch down. Then when you are about one inch from the end, gradually decrease your seam allowance so that the needle is at the edge of the fold line. Repeat the same process to create all four pleats. With right sides together, position one strap connector along the top edge of each main panel, aligning the raw edges and measuring in according to the pattern on the left side edge. Sew each of the connectors in place a quarter inch from the raw edge and make sure to back stitch. With right sides together, fold the exterior in half, aligning the top and side edges Sew each of the sides together with 3 8 inch seam allowance, stopping at the cut corner. Next, you're gonna create a boxed bottom in the same manner as the lining, but this time you're going to use 3 8 of an inch seam allowance. Also, it's important to note that the pleat will not be on the corners. This is intentional because you don't want your corners to be difficult to sew through, so I made sure that the pleats were a little bit in from each of the corners. After sewing, turn your exterior right side out. If you're using a metal zipper end, add it to the closed end of your zipper tape without the pull according to the manufacturer's instructions. Be sure to check out our step-by-step -step YouTube tutorial for installing this type of hardware. If you're making a fabric zipper tab with wrong sides together, fold each of the short sides of the zipper tab to the center and press. Then with wrong sides together, fold each long side to the center and press. Lastly, fold the tab in half, matching the short sides and make sure your tab measures according to the pattern. Close the zipper completely. Fold the closed end of the zipper tape, which is opposite to the pull, so it measures about three quarters of an inch wide. You can either glue baste or stitch the folds in place. Next, slide the fabric tab over the end of the zipper so that the zipper is in between the fold. Top stitch the tab to the zipper an eighth inch from all four sides. With wrong sides together, fold each side of the 16 inch or longer zipper at a 90 degree angle and stitch in place. Then open the zipper completely. With right sides together, position one side of the zipper along the top edge of the exterior. The folded end of the zipper should be about a quarter inch from the side seam. When you get close to the opposite side seam, begin to taper the zipper away from the top edge according to the pattern. Make sure the zipper is completely out of the seam allowance. Sew the zipper in place with a quarter inch seam allowance and make sure to backstitch over the ends. Repeat for the opposite side of the zipper and exterior. After sewing, test your zipper to make sure it opens and closes evenly. There should be some of the zipper tape that extends past the stitching on both the front and the back. If needed, you can seam rip part of the zipper and adjust it and restitch so that way your zipper closes evenly. Then turn your exterior so it's wrong side out. With right sides together, put the lining inside the exterior, aligning the top edges and side seams. Make sure your handles are tucked down and also your zipper pocket should be unzipped. Then pin or clip around the top edge. Sew the entire top edge with 3 8 inch seam allowance, making sure the zipper end and hardware are all out of the way. After sewing, turn the bag right side out by pushing the exterior and lining through the bottom unsewn edge of the zipper pocket. Top stitch the bottom edge of the zipper pocket closed with the 8 inch seam allowance. If you prefer, you could hand sew the bottom of the pocket closed. Then push the pocket through the zipper opening and arrange in place. Push the lining down into the exterior. Use your fingers to roll the top seam to make sure the top edge is tight and flat. Then top stitch around the top edge with a quarter inch seam allowance. As you reach your strap connectors, make sure they are up towards the zipper. And your Daphne bag is complete. I hope you enjoyed this pattern, and if you need additional help, feel free to contact us anytime. We would love to see photos of your completed project. Share pictures using the hashtag SallyTomato and hashtag DaphneHandbag. 
share in the Sally Tomato Patterns and Hardware group on Facebook, Instagram, and other social sites. Also, be sure to subscribe to our channel so you don't miss out on any future tutorials. Thanks for watching!